Prime Minister Tan Sri Mohirin Yassin has unveiled a national recovery plan comprising a four-phase exit strategy from the COVID-19 crisis. Mohirin said in a televised address today that Malaysia needs to exit the crisis as soon as possible and that Putrajaya is losing one billion ringgit a day under the current FMCO. The plan is based on three main threshold indicators. The COVID-19 infection rate in the community based on the number of daily infections the capacity of the public health system based on bed utilisation rates in the ICU and the percentage of the population that has been fully vaccinated. The current lockdown is considered as the first phase. The second phase will begin once the average daily new COVID-19 infections fall below 4,000. ICU bed usage returns to moderate levels and 10% of the population is fully vaccinated. Under this phase, economic activities will reopen in phases, with up to 80% of workers allowed on site. No social activities and interstate travelling will be allowed. Once the average daily COVID-19 cases fall below 2,000 and 40% of the population is fully inoculated, the country will move into the third phase. Putrajaya expects to achieve this by August at the earliest. Under this phase, there will be further easing of curbs, including the resumption of sports and social activities and the reopening of parliament by September or October in accordance with strict standard operating procedures. Once 60% of the population has been fully vaccinated and daily cases fall to below 500 a day, Malaysia will move into the final phase with the reopening of all economic sectors and resumption of interstate travel and domestic tourism. Putrajaya expects to make this transition by as early as end October. The government has given conditional approval for the usage of COVID-19 vaccines produced by China's CanSino Biologics and the US's Johnson & Johnson. Health DG Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah announced this today. Both vaccines require only one dose to be effective. Also approved is the usage of Pfizer-BioNTech's Comirnaty vaccine for those aged 12 years old and above. Meanwhile, Minister Kairi Jamaluddin, who is coordinating the national vaccination effort, said in a tweet today that Selangor will be able to achieve an 80% vaccination rate by September. He said the state will be ramping up its daily vaccination rate to 135,000 per day in July and 165,000 per day in August. As of yesterday, Malaysia's most popular state reported the highest number of individuals who had completed their second dose of vaccination vaccination at 180,605. Cumulatively, a total of 1.41 million individuals have been fully vaccinated in the country. As for infections, new daily cases came in at 5,419 today. The tally now stands at 667,876, led by Slango at 1,996. 6,831 have recovered, while 70,112 are still battling the infection. 922 are warded in ICUs, 450 of whom need respiratory support. 101 new deaths were reported, bringing the total to 4,069. Berjaya Corp's newly minted group CEO Jale Rashid has unveiled a three-year strategic plan to transform the group into an institutionalised high-performing organisation by end 2024. Among others, the strategy will see the group recategorizing its core business segments into five – retail, food and beverage, property, hospitality and services, which will house its gaming, digital services and financial technology units. He said the group's strategic plan will anchor around five key pillars to drive operational efficiency and execution. They are profitability, governance, process, people and digital. Jalil also announced key headline targets targets, including divestments with 2 billion ringgit over two years and 5 billion ringgit over five years, reduction of debt level from 5 billion ringgit to 2.5 billion ringgit over three years, and a dividend policy for all operating companies. 
he said Berjaya Corp is undervalued despite having well-known brands. And this is because the way the group is organised makes it difficult to pinpoint and value it. Another objective, he said, is to ensure that the companies are self-sustainable and able to compete outside of the group. The counter closed more than 13% higher today at 33.5 sen. Axiata Group says the group and Telenor Asia have completed the due diligence works pertaining to the proposed merger between Cellcom Axiata and Digi.com and will be signing definitive agreements soon. Axiata President and Group Chief Executive Officer Dato Izadin Idris said during a virtual press conference, both parties are hopeful of signing the agreements within a matter of days or a week. He said that in terms of timeline for the completion of the merger, he was told by advisors that it may take several more months depending on the parties receiving the approval from the authorities, particularly from the MCMC. He added that the submission to the MCMC can be made immediately after the definitive agreements are signed. Asked if the group is looking at any further mergers and acquisitions or expansion plans for Axiata going forward, he said he could not divulge specifics. Although the group is looking at options amid the merger among telecom companies in Indonesia in order for the group to maintain its position in the market. He added that the same goes for other markets Axiata is operating in, such as Bangladesh and Nepal. There may also be opportunities for its tower infrastructure unit, E.co Group, to expand into new markets, he said, such as Indonesia, Vietnam and Thailand. Axiata ended trading 1.8% higher at 3 ringgit 92 for a market capitalization of 35.96 billion ringgit. Maju Expressway has defaulted on its 50 million ringgit bond principal after failing to redeem its outstanding amount. Facility agent CIMB Investment Bank said in a filing today with Bank Negara Malaysia's FAST website that the outstanding nominal value of 50 million ringgit had not been redeemed upon its maturity today and is now suspended. Typically, whenever a bond issuer defaults, the company may opt for one of three possible outcomes – a debt restructuring, winding up or judicial management. The company, which is owned and operated by Maju Holdings, is the concessionaire of the 26km Maju Expressway, linking the Kuala Lumpur city centre with Cyberjaya and Putrajaya. On April 27, MEX2, another Maju Holdings subsidiary, deferred its 1.3 billion ringgit Islamic medium-term notes, principal repayment and profit payment for up to four months. A few days prior to that, it was reported that MAX2 had deferred coupon payment due on April 30, 2021 for the highway operator's 150 million ringgit junior bonds as the requisite conditions pursuant to the trust deed dated April 20, 2016 had yet to be fulfilled. Max 2 was set up to issue bonds to raise money to finance the proposed 18-kilometre Putrajaya KLIA Highway. 